you so much for watching the Press Avenue YouTube channel. My name is John, and today we're talking about automating WordPress a little bit with Zapier and Gravity Forms. Over on our website, pressavenue.com, we have our latest blog posts and tutorials. So if you don't see one on YouTube, you can definitely find them all here. All right, so let's get to it. First off, Zapier, which is Z-A-P-I-E-R. If you've never heard of it, it's similar to if this then that, so ifttt.com. It's the same kind of thing, but this allows for more apps, more flexibility, and different ways to integrate with different services. So this is just their homepage. It shows you how it works. There's a trigger when I get a new Gmail, do something. The action for this particular example is to copy the attachment from Gmail to Dropbox automatically, and then alert you on Slack when there's a new Dropbox file. Um, so it's just kind of how you want to use different things. What I like about Zapier, some people call it Zapier, is there are 1,500-ish apps um, to integrate with. So you don't have to go and learn an API. You don't have to use any code. You really just come through here and pick what you want. For example, we're going to be using Google Sheets in this particular one. Um, and then this shows you how the workflow works, etc. So if you have any questions about it, it's zapier.com. If you go to apps, you can go through the 1500. Um, there's way too many to go through. I will say, I do use the Slack one quite a bit. I use the MailChimp, Google Drive, Sheets, and Gmail, as you'll see in this upcoming tutorial. After that, we'll be using Gravity Forms. So Gravity Forms is a very popular WordPress Forms plugin. Let me zoom in. Um, I've had this one forever. Um, it is really great, and it's super powerful. It allows you to connect Gravity Forms to Zapier, Zapier to Google Sheets. Um, so Zapier is the middleman. They also have great add-ons. If you ever need to take money, sign people up for a newsletter, or just have very advanced forms, we do recommend Gravity Forms. All right, lastly, if this is helpful in any way, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And also leave a comment if you have any questions about what's working, not working, or if this helped you in any way. Thanks so much for watching. All right, so let me just give you the preliminary of what's happening here. Number one, we've created a form which is for registering for a seminar, but it could be a form for anything. It doesn't have to be order details. It could be your favorite cat, your favorite ice cream, etc. And then what we're gonna do is after a form is submitted, it's gonna run over to Zapier. Zapier is gonna process that information and put it in another app. This could be Slack. This could be emailing, it could be anything. It's completely up to you. What we're gonna do in this setup is, first they'll fill out a gravity form, and then it'll say thank you. But for our, our workflow, it'll go gravity form, Zapier, and to a Google Sheet. Now, you can log into uh, WordPress, go to Forms, which is the gravity form, go to Entries, and export it as a CSV. But the only problem is you don't have the most recent version if someone else fills this out. What I like about this method is the Google Sheet is live. The second someone submits something, it'll pop up saying, hey, Jane Smith registered for this seminar. This is the details. So that's why I like it. Also, from the client's perspective, it's very easy to open a Google Sheet than it is to log in, go to entries, download the CSV twice a week or whatever it is. So let's get to it. So for a preliminary, we've created a form. If you want to know how to create a form in Gravity Forms or you have questions about that, just leave a comment below and I'd love to make a video for you. But here's a basic form. It says we need your order details and a verified payment. So date stamp is just a hidden field, but we want to know when it was submitted, when they placed their order, at least or when they think they did, and then they compare the names um, against Stripe. Uh, their name on the order, what class they're attending, the attendee's name, company, address, etc. Do you want to be notified, uh, etc., etc. So we can put all of this in a Google Sheet. Additionally, it says, would you like to be notified of future seminars? That can go into MailChimp, Constant Contact, whatever you use. Now, Gravity Forms can do that, but also Zapier can do that. So you can pick and choose how you'd like to automate things. The second thing we've we have to do right out of the gate is create a um, Google Sheet. So let me see if this lets me zoom in. So basically I've taken each field. So if we come back here to the form, I have a date, date stamp, and then when your order was. 
um, date of order is here, and then this first one is the timestamp. Um, let me actually name this. All right, so there's my Google Sheet. So I have my timestamp, and then here's all the other stuff that's in that form. All right, so those are the two preliminary things you need. Next, we're going to go over to Zapier. Simply log in, sign up. They have a free trial. Um, and this is kind of your dashboard here. We're going to start off by clicking Make a Zap. And let me zoom in. There we go. That's way better. All right, so let's make a zap. So it's what we're doing is we're taking different APIs. That's why it's Z, API, ER. And we're merging them together. So I can search for hundreds of apps. Here's apps I've already used recently. So it's suggesting those. These red ones are built in zaps. So I can use code, email, parser, RSS, webhooks, etc. And then down here are popular ones. So we're just going to search for app at the top. I'm going to type gravity and we get gravity forms. So if you look over here on the left hand side, our trigger is gravity forms. And it's going to say select the gravity forms trigger. The only option for Gravity Forms is a new form submission. Other apps actually have a list of options based on what they do. So new form submission, so I'll hit save. Then it says pick a sample to set up your Zap. So what we need to do is hook this link into our form. So we'll copy, we'll go back to WordPress. Here is our form, make sure you have it saved. I've already saved it. I'm going to go to Settings, and I'm going to Zapier. Now, I will say, I jumped the gun a bit. If you go to Add-ons under Gravity Forms, you do have to install the Zapier add-on. Uh, so I did miss that. If you need help with that, let me know in the comments. All right, so here we have Zapier Feeds. We'll click Add New. And then it gives you a, a name at the top. I usually just name it the date, and today is July 12th, just so I know when I did this. I don't think I need spaces. I put in the webhook. Active, yes or no. So if you're not using it, you can technically turn it off. Um, you can also just turn it off in Zapier, which I think is easier. Use admin labels. So this takes the admin labels that you've created within the form and pushes them through. Um, I'll leave that. I'll turn it on. And then conditional logic. If you don't want to send it to Zapier for whatever reason, you can add a condition. So if you're asking what their favorite ice cream is and they choose chocolate, maybe it doesn't go to Zapier, maybe it goes somewhere else. So you can say that within here. But I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. If you use any kind of caching, I would come back and make sure this is actually in the list. So here it is, Zapier feeds. And then um, if not, clear the cache and see if it's here. Because if Zapier doesn't see this hook through Gravity Forms, then none of this works. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to say, OK, I did this. So it says, pick a sample to set up your Zap. Form submission A. I open this up, and it has sample data. So it's just random stuff. He's from Middle Earth. He paid the source URL. Just random stuff was added in here. So we're going to go ahead and click Continue. And it says, almost finished here. Your Zap currently lacks an action step. Now add one. So we've connected our trigger. New form submission, but that's as far as we've gone. Now the action is, what do we do? So now we're going to connect to Google Sheets. It's read my mind. And I'm going to search for a Google Sheet action. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just going to create a spreadsheet row. So I click here. So this one, so in Gravity Forms, you only have three options. For creating. Um, on sheets you have additional options. So you can actually look through the sheet and see if that person already exists, maybe based on a first and last name. If they don't, you can create a new row. If they do, it just stops. Um, so that's up to you, or you can update the row. I'm going to create a new row, so save and continue. Um, that is my account, so I'll hit test to see if it works. If you don't have an account set up, it'll ask you to connect to your Google account. Now hit next. All right, the Google Drive, let's see. My Google Drive, I choose the spreadsheet. 
Actually, I'll just copy the name here. There it is. So I've connected to my drive, I've connected to my spreadsheet, and then it's actually asking for the worksheet. So on this particular one, I'm not gonna pull them all up, but past years are in here with people that have registered. So let me turn this off. Right now, registrations is the worksheet. To add a worksheet, you hit plus down here. Additionally, this has form responses. A Google form can manually be used if someone registers via check or telephone, and the company can put in registrations without going through a shopping cart or gravity forms. All right, so it's called registrations. So I'll just copy this because I'm lazy. Go back here. Actually, it's gonna load them all. I select registrations. Now it pulls up all the information from this worksheet. So if you look, it says timestamp, date of order, name on order. If I come back here, it says timestamp, date of order, name of order. Does it make sense? All right, so next, it needs to know what the fields are called. So under timestamp, if I hit this, it has four lines and an arrow. It wants to know where in the gravity form is the timestamp. So it says timestamp here. We're gonna map this to, let me come back to the edit, this right here. So this hidden field. Um, and this one's called field ID 13. And you can name them, but they haven't been named in this one. So let's see, what did I name it? I had date stamp. So I can scroll down here and there it is, date stamp. So the timestamp is called date stamp in Gravity Forms. Next, date order, date of order. So over here, please select the date of your order. I'll come back here, hit plus, and write please. No, let's name something different, date of order. Name on the order, I'll go to plus, and I'll search for name. So it does name, I can do first, but I can hit space, and I can type name, and I can do last, or you can just select the attendee name. But I wanted to show you that you can add multiple things in one area. Class that they're attending. So if I scroll through here. And then, oh, name on the order. Hold on, I got this backwards. Let me make this easier for you and for me. We will shrink this down. We will open this up and put it over here. Get rid of this. All right, now I won't go crazy. Thankfully, I have a large monitor. All right, so date. Name on the order. So the reason we have this particular one, if you're wondering, because there's name here and a name here, someone can buy this thing, this class for 20 people in their company. So the name on the order uh, will be Bilbo Baggins, but the attendee would be Jane Smith or John Doe, etc. So this particular one, they need to know the name on the order. So name on the order, I'll just do the full name. What class they're attending is this one right here seminar you're attending. First name is the attendee first name. So I'll go here, attendee first, and then go plus attendee last, company name, it's right there, address. So Gravity Forms breaks up the address. So you have enter in your address and we'll get the full address are the first line, second line, city, country, state, street, etc. So this is the address. I'm gonna do the street address. Line two, address line two, the city. So an update, recent, maybe not that recently, but when you click in these boxes, it automatically puts you in that search bar. I didn't used to do that, so I'm thankful there is a update for that, because it makes this process easier. Phone, 
phone two, email, class attendings on here twice. Oh yeah, so we have class attending and class attending. So we don't need it twice, so we're not gonna fill that out. And then how did you hear about us? And then Stripe is something else where you can verify. So we can enter this data in. We can also check the name on the order versus that name within Stripe to see if it's paid or not paid, if it's failed, etc. And that will be a whole nother video. But that's why that one is there. So I'll go ahead and continue. If you do happen to add or take away fields, and I did it in this particular one, you can also refresh that list, but you do have to start over. All right, so now we're gonna test Google Sheets. We're gonna send test spreadsheet row to Google Sheets. This is what it's gonna send right here. And then these fields are empty, which is just fine. So hit send. So typically this takes a minute or so. It's taken a little longer before. So it says a test spreadsheet row was sent. So if I go here, we have, oh, it's putting it in the, this, if you see it here, it's colored and it shouldn't be. So I'll check why. Um, so let's just remove the formatting. There we go. So sample value, timestamp, date of order, name, class, first and last, and it fills out the whole row based on test data. If this test data comes in, then it works. So you don't have to go fill out some mile long form just to test it. If this is here, then this form to Google Sheets connection works. All right, so now come down here. You can retest it if something doesn't quite work right and you wanna try it again, or you can add an additional step. Another step would be, do they wanna be notified of, a of another seminar? So that's right here, send to MailChimp. And, or another one could be someone registers for your seminar you wanna know, send me a text message. So all sorts of stuff can happen. I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish, and then it's gonna tell me to name it. So I'm gonna say seminar registration. And then um, you can select a folder, and then you can turn it on or off. Um, I turn them off based on if it's being used or not. Um, so if it's not being used, I turn it off um, just because it doesn't need to be using uh, my zaps. All right, so that's it for connecting Gravity Forms to Zapier and then to Google Sheets. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Additionally, we have a Facebook page called WordPress Tutorials and Help, which is a Facebook group, I should say. Uh, Facebook.com slash group slash Press Avenue. I'll leave a link in the description where you and 400 other people can talk about um, the different tutorials. If you want a little bit more help or you're not quite sure about a particular thing, again, you can leave them in the YouTube comments. You can also post it on Facebook. Lastly, you can check out our website, pressavenue.com. Give us a thumbs up if this was helpful and go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Thanks again for watching.